Your car and mine, in fact all modern cars, are bullshitting us every day, over and over. And I've kinda had enough. That's next. I'm John Cadogan from autoexpert.com.au, the place where Australia new car buyers save thousands off their next new cars. Hit me up on the website for that. You might not know this, but all car makers have human factors design teams. And these people are specifically tasked with dealing with what's called HMI, the Human Machine Interface. And yes, this does sound a little bit the Matrix with the whole plug in the back of the head going on. This will feel a little weird. Oddly enough, it's not that far from the truth, you know. HMI is all about control architecture, feedback, and the flow of information. The car tells you stuff, and you act on it. Hopefully it's the right stuff, and you make the right actions, and you get home without a detour via the emergency department, or worse, the morgue. This is kind of where the HMI dudes live, and their playground has enlarged somewhat lately. And this... Kim Kardashianization, arsewise, of the HMI arena is due to the increasing complexity of modern cars. A modern car bombards you with all of this information, if that's the right word for some of it, about the driving process, allegedly. And a lot of that information is just bullshit. Dangerously distracting bullshit. Here's an example. I remember many, many moons ago, I was on this Audi TT Quattro launch in some godforsaken forest in Western Shkaya. This is back when Audi still talked to me, you know, before Volkswagen decided that killing people prematurely was a reasonable thing in the pursuit of additional profit. <laughs> Quite some time ago, in other words. Anyway, we're screaming through this forest and the message centre between the Speedo and the Taco is suddenly all aglow. It has lit up like cracker night. That's the 4th of July in America. Big orange warning symbol, okay? Like a volcano erupting. Mount Vesuvius or something. Pyroclastic flow down there. Like, it really doesn't look good. And I don't want to be the dude who broke the TT Quattro. And it's quite distracting, okay? I'm setting the car up for a big sweeping right-hander on gravel. There are massive trees on both sides of the road. Attention to detail and execution here, quite important. <laughs> Still, this message does seem quite urgent. So I prioritise getting around the bend and I look for somewhere safe to pull over. I put on the hazard lights, I find a safe spot because I don't want the lunatic in the TT behind me cleaning me up in a couple of seconds. That's bad. I get out and I check the car out and it's all good seemingly, right? No volcano-like leaks anywhere and I check twice. <laughs> no lava. Water, oil, tyre pressures, they all seem fine. Orange spurty warning symbol on the dash, still there, bastard. And of course, no friggin' cell phone coverage. So I walk up this hill, which is a breach of the motoring journalist's code of ethics, and I get like 1% of one bar of cell phone signal eventually, and I call 1-800-MONKEY-SPANKER-SUPPORT. Long story short, okay, it's the low headlamp washer fluid warning indicator. <sighs> Those box head mother lovers. Yes. A couple of points on this. Number one, I don't need to know anything about that when I'm driving the damn car. It is not mission critical. So why not just chime in a bit later on, on shutdown, instead of distracting the shit out of me? Why not just have a list of mission critical imminent warnings, right? Low oil pressure, over temperature for the engine, low tyre pressures, whatever. Plus another list of things that will absolutely wait. I'm looking at you, overzealous Audi HMI idiots, and I know you are not alone. Instead of presenting me with a symbol that looks as if the four horsemen of the TT apocalypse have just been cleared to ride in weapons hot, why not just give me a simple text alert a lot later on that says, hey, your headlamp washer fluid is low. Just thought you'd want to know. Number two, not only do I specifically not need to know this, knowing it can conceivably distract me and hurt me quite badly. How hard is this to figure out? 
Your friggin' job in HMI land is to make driving easier. What if some hapless TT owner stops immediately in a dangerous place, wanting to protect their shiny new monkey spanking toy and gets cleaned up? That's kind of a bad outcome for everyone, you know, dying because your headlamp washer fluid got low. How ignominious. (laughs) Still, it would be one less Audi owner on the road, and those self-entitled assholes never indicate when changing lanes, nor do they just wave a frankly, thank you, (laughs) if you let them in in traffic. It never happens. So there's that. Perhaps it is a win for the gene pool after all. The next thing I want to talk to you about is false positives, okay? There's lots of them. A false positive is like when you are sitting in the lounge room alone one evening and you see movement in the corner of your eye. Perhaps the curtain just moves. You know, it's probably not the sons of anarchy steaming through the window to request their drugs back. I'm not an especially jumpy person, but when this happens with the curtains or whatever, I'm looking around the room for the nearest improvised weapon, and I don't think I am alone. Evolution has wired us for this, because if you are walking through the forest, I don't know, 100,000 years ago or something, and there is a, I don't know, bustle in the hedgerow behind you, it could be the wind, right? Or it could be a hungry tiger. If you react like it's the wind, and you don't look, and it's a tiger, That's bad. You become lunch. And then you don't get to pass on your genes to subsequent generations. So false positive reactors tend to survive. And it's deeply ingrained in us at a gene type evolutionary level. But it is intensely frustrating inside a car, right? Lane keeping assistance, right? How many intelligence insulting beeps and warning signals would you like? Like, I know I'm close to the right-hand edge of the lane. Thanks so much. I know this because I put the damn car there because an eminent left-hander is coming up and that's where I need the car. Blind spot monitoring is the same thing. Please don't keep warning me here. I know that car is there. I know it's there because I adjusted the damn mirrors correctly and I do tend to be situationally aware of everything around me when I drive a car because I don't know that's my job. Parking sensors, same thing. Too many false positives. Beeping because you're in imminent danger of hitting three pedals on a bloody dandelion or something. Please. All these beeps and flashes and chimes all the time, warning us continuously of non-existent threats. So what do you do, right? You ignore them or you turn them off or both because they annoy the shit out of you because they do not help. And then... One day you actually are drifting out of the lane or you haven't seen that car in the adjacent lane or the parking sensor detects a child and you think it's just another one of those overhanging flowers. Suddenly it's a disaster, a preventable disaster. And let me say that it is absolutely your fault when this happens. Primary responsibility for driving safely is borne by you, the driver. These technologies are only supposed to help. But I really do want to slap these automotive HMI dudes, collectively, Bosch, etc., car makers. They're all doing it. You assholes have an obsession with endless false positives, you know, thousands of false positives for every real threat. The real threats, therefore, become needles in a haystack of false positivity. And those real threats get well and truly lost. So either the HMI design protocols are shit, or the technology that they are built around is not quite there yet. I guess there's a third possibility as well, and it is so bad in some modern cars that I sense the evil input of lawyers. The disturbance in the force is that bad. It could be an ass-covering legal directive. Just detect everything, and then they can't sue us for not warning them. Lawyers... They so help the real world. Have you noticed? Look at how well the federal government functions with all those cabinet ministers being former lawyers. The only problem, right, with this detect everything approach is it will not work. It doesn't work now. It does not save you from a real threat because you ignore it. Let me know what you think about the absurd density of beeps, chimes and warning flashes in your modern car in the comments feed below. Are they helping 
or are they just distracting or do you just turn them off? I'd really like to know.